I was a child of the 60s, you know, and uh, building things for yourself. I mean, I ended up building, you know, my own homes a couple times and and uh, living in the country and, uh, you know, raising small animals and butchering them and stuff like that. And a lot of that was just trying to experience the essence of a, of an earlier life, if, if not a present-day life, you know, and... Uh, so it's not a non-intellectual thing at all. I was, as a matter of fact, really the kind of carpentry I enjoyed is where I, you know, designed and built the thing. I did everything. It wasn't just. Uh, I was a pretty poor carpenter when I was working for others doing their projects. And what caused you to train to become a teacher of the Alexander technique? Well, the. Uh, Probably because I uh, felt like I needed a career. That probably was a career motive to to some extent. I don't know. I don't know. You know, I think I was just so taken by it. I just wanted more of it, and and more of it meant training as a result of uh, the experience and not just taking lessons. I was also, I mean, I remember I toyed with the idea of uh, going back to school to become a physical therapist. But uh, it didn't ultimately intrigue me as much. So I, uh, so I, I don't know if I was really a, a well thought out move to become an Alexander teacher. It's it just I was too engrossed in it not to go for it. You know. And so after you graduated, you became an Alexander teacher. How did you go about establishing a practice? Well, I, I, I never did. You know, I, uh, in, in most senses, uh, I've been an unsuccessful uh, Alexander teacher. I mean, I've, I've lived in southwest Missouri where the technique still is of uh, very little known. And I, oh, I moved here w with my wife. I had been married before and, and, and now remarried to my wife uh, after graduating from the uh, uh, after becoming an Alexander teacher, and uh, where was I? Lost my train of thought there, Luke. Help me out. I was uh, asking you, how did you go about establishing a practice? Oh, well, how did I go about it? I, I suppose the most useful thing I did was that at a university down here at uh, Missouri State University, I uh, made friends with uh, a professor in the uh, theater department, and he... Uh, he introduced me to his students, and and those early years of uh, teaching those students, really, I mean, it, it didn't make me any living. I, I was still a carpenter, and my wife was a professor. So, I mean, the living by the Alexander Technique never did come. But I did uh, have a, a really good feeling with those students. They were... Uh, Theater students are up for anything, and as it turned out, I, I'd come up with something unique. I was, uh, as I first uh, was working as a teacher, I was, uh, you know, insecure in a lot of ways. I, I didn't quite know what I was doing, and so I, here, I'll go on in this vein, because it kind of explains me pretty well. I, uh, you know, with hands-on students... I sometimes was at a loss about what to do, and I remember one particular student. I I told him, uh, and I think I was just repeating something I'd heard before, but I said, "Just imagine you're uh, you're uh, a cheetah or a jaguar. I can't remember what. Uh, looking out over the savanna, you know, the way they sit, and they're looking just looking out over um, the land. And he was sitting in a chair as I was working, and he just shot up, you know. I don't mean to say shot up out of the chair, but he, his, he just lengthened and widened and just freed up uh, in a way that was extremely obvious and in a way that I hadn't brought about uh, earlier with my uh, hands or suggestions. And uh, so that, uh, that one occasion, you know, got me thinking real hard about it. it just seemed like there was a way in which I could really get people to help me to help them, you know, by uh, 
sort of like the state of mind they had, you know. And uh, and it turned out that my style was uh, involved a, I think, uh, you know, a fairly unique uh, way of uh, conceiving your body surface and and, and uh, learning to understand your sensations. What year did this incident happen with the particular student and the cheetah example? Okay, let me see. I, uh, 86, 77, 8. I'd put that in about 1989, I guess. We uh, had just moved to southwest Missouri, Springfield, Missouri, about well, six months earlier. I, I would put it at, uh, I guess, in the... Maybe it's maybe it was nineteen ninety, but that's close enough. So that's been that's a lot of years. That's been <laughs> there's been twenty twenty one years where I've been thinking along these lines, you know. So take me along your journey. You you must have gone from there, from the example of, of the cheetah sitting on the savanna, and then you must have had other realizations related to that that led to your development of posture release imagery. So take me along your teaching journey. Well, early on, I remember I was uh, at that same time or just after that, really, I was, I think I was trying to put together a little lecture demonstration that I could uh, explain to people the Alexander Technique. And in the process I'd recall that my teacher had used sort of a simple, oh, I can't even explain it right here, but he'd used a simple tool with a, with a rag to explain how, <laughs> I can't explain it here, but anyway, he'd used a device that, that sort of vaguely explained what, it was, uh, what he thought was happening um, in good use and in, and in poor use, what we were doing with our bodies. And so I started uh, musing on what, what is good use not only for human beings, but what constitutes good use for any sort of animal? And, I mean, at the time, I, never, I, never, I wasn't talking about any animal under the sea. I, would, I, I was talking about mammals or any really early organism that was uh, land-bound, you know, a tetrapod. And uh, it just came to me, I, oh, I, it came to me that the simplest sort of... Uh, um, support system that an animal could have, animal could have, was some sort of a fluid geodesic dome. You know, I was a, like I say, a child of the '60s, and and Buckminster Fuller was on my mind. I was a carpenter, so I was thinking about light structure, and and right away I thought, well, there's something that's supporting us that in a more is more elemental than a skeletal system. And in a certain sense, it's our own body surface. And early organisms, in a sense, could arguably said to be, uh, in a way, supported by their own surface, by a certain manipulation of, like a bubble or something. Their, their own, manipulating their own surface, they, uh, they came up with support. And that's where I came up with the, uh, the dorsal-ventral relationship, uh, which... I still think I think is real important, which is uh, in the gravitational field, the dorsal surface should be uh, thought of as light and full, and the ventral surface should be thought of as uh, denser and heavier and and a bit contracted. And well, on a drawing, maybe we could show it here. You know, this is uh, sort of an indication of how an early organisms could support itself lightly with the least effort. And uh, somewhere along that line, I, I got the idea, I was trying to figure out, well, what's dorsal on me and what's ventral? And somewhere along that line, not only did I have like an intellectual thought, but I had the kinesthetic experience of lightening up and that... And that was another big time for me when I actually physically changed by conceiving myself uh, 